the uh, letter that came out uh, this week uh, that where Meta, or Mark Zuckerberg himself, uh, confirmed that, quote, he was pressured by the Biden administration uh, to censor and uh, adapt and change how they uh, specifically look at uh, COVID information, specifically during the pandemic. And the questions I want to ask or, or, or talk about um, is a freedom of speech one, to an extent. Um, and it comes from the concept, and I'm, I'll refer to my notes here, as uh, our governments around the world, the US and the UK, mostly European mainly, trying to kill freedom of speech. If so, how and why? So if this is what they're trying to do to get on top of quote-unquote misinformation, end quote, then wouldn't there be a way to control public... Wouldn't this be a way to potentially control public discourse? After launching the first episode of the show, I had a personal chat where I was asked the following question. Does a government necessarily want you to be educated and be able or encourage you to be free thinking, specifically? My answer, but they're going to go out of their way potentially and in a world where we were less educated or we were less free thinking it would be easier you could make the argument to say that they could push a view without it necessarily being questioned or critiqued or adapted and this in in my opinion is where freedom of speech needs to be important and needs to be able to uh, be articulated fairly and I think that and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we come on to the X ban that um, obviously happened officially last week but there's been some updates related to it uh, if you want to skip straight to that skip to the next story but the uh, concept is that I think that it's really important to have this open discourse and at the end of the day we're all adults right so if we see something if we see something that could be, you know, slightly dubious or we should question what we read from, from everywhere and do our own research. I don't think there is a world, um, you know, where we just take what we see on Twitter, which shouldn't have any children on it anyway because it's meant to be 17 and above, right? So in theory, it should be 18 and above, but it's not as according to the iOS app store. It's only 17 plus. And for me, I personally think anyway that that is important for us to, you know, have that outlet, have that open town square. Now, that isn't to say that it should be completely unchecked. I guess you could say the counter argument to freedom of speech is, are you going to allow hate speech? Are you going to allow like anything to fly? But again, the question comes is, where's that line, right? A flat out ban because of some content isn't helpful in my opinion i think it doesn't allow because it's basically then shutting down that if your view isn't the popular view isn't the politically correct view that you can be shut down moving closer to the actual uh article or the or the letter meta or zuckerberg said in the letter that uh, came out this week that he regrets that he didn't speak out more about the pressure that the Biden administration was putting on the platform to tackle misinformation. In the letter, he also apologizes for the censorship in the first place. Now, before we go any further, I just want to share or articulate or showcase uh, the meanings uh, for those who may be not aware. Censoring is the as the suppression of speech public communication or or other information right so it's taking away or taking back or removing the ability to share something the meaning of corruption dishonesty or illegal behavior that is especially put in, by positions of power such as government offices or police officers and intrudes to be wrongly or imposed an unlawful meaning. So there's a level of biasy there. As well as the meaning of biasy. The action of supporting or opposing a specific person on a thing that is unfair in a way of allowing 
a personal opinions to be influenced your judgment so we all have biases right and there's this concept in psychology around unconscious bias and we're naturally going to want to and it's uncomfortable for us to specifically connect or specifically go towards a opposite viewpoint right so let's use a stupid example I could say I agree with the fact that the, the sky is blue, right? And you'll say, well, no, I, I think the sky is green, perhaps. And your, in theory, unconscious bias could be, well, no, I think the sky is green. So I'm going to double down on the fact that the sky is green. When what we should be doing, if this is in politics, if this is in a different view, etc., is we should be leaning towards the opposite side. So let's say a character like Elon Musk, for example, who is notoriously known for being a more right-leaning individual in regards to political sense, he, I would hope, would educate himself on the left side of the opinions that he talks about and the things that he deals with. And then you can have a more, in my opinion, at least a more balanced view, right? A more centrist view. The issue in some societies, and especially as we're seeing it more and more, is the extremes of, you know, some controversial topics such as immigration. Are, are Some are saying that all immigration is bad. That's the argument, right? When, no, there's a lot of positives for immigration, sure. But also there's some negatives that come with immigration and you need to understand both sides of those to be able to actually fully be able to understand the conversation and something that i've always done and i think is important to do is understand and, and be happy to say that i don't have enough information to be able to comment on whatever it is that uh, is being discussed and i think for me I don't think a lot of people are overly confident with that approach or with that reality because they may be concerned about you know oh they think the person who i'm saying that to will think i'm stupid or the person i'm saying that to thinks that i'm you know not willing to engage in a conversation sure educate me on what's going on but i'm not going to have a view until i actually have enough information to from both sides to be able to have a view specifically and a little bit on biasy if i only tell you about the downsides of something so the downsides of you know we potentially could be talking about um, a piece of content that came out uh, this week as well about vaccines if i only tell you about the downsides with vaccines you're just going to struggle to even think about the concept of you know vaccinating your children or vaccinating yourself so is it fair is it non-biased for us to only share one side and this is why having freedom of speech freedom of expression is important because it allows a potentially maybe louder minority but still to share their voice and still have their opinion heard so that us as intelligent being able to critically think about a situation opinions or people can go about actually articulating what we feel actually articulating the fact that actually no i i agree with these elements but i don't agree with this and i think there's also a, a worry in, in in culture at the moment where you know this is where we see with cancel culture which is around if i agree with what the one thing this person has said then i must the potential reality could be i must agree with everything they've ever said so if they're a controversial figure it might be damaging to one's career it might be damaging to uh, our client perception it might be damaging to what what and how we feel in in that respect so i think it i think it's important to firstly establish just because you agree with a comment that someone has said doesn't mean you agree with everything they've said and you know as well and some key takeaways if you are going to hopefully take something away from the show today is that you should do your own research you should be an intelligent enough adult to be like okay do i trust this do i trust the source and if i do let's still fact check it let's still double check and let's see specifically what's been going on another point within the videos that i or the or the resources that i use to uh, research this topic there was this conversation around uh, and I quote, if this is stuff that you see in public, imagine what you don't see in private. Now, unfortunately, that's a quote I have to refer to uh, the video specifically uh, because they didn't actually source the quote. Uh, now, that might irrelevate or, or irrelevate the quote, but it does bring up an important point, which is if this is what's happening publicly. So we have a, a letter that's coming out and Mark Zuckerberg is saying that, yes, he did 
or the or the platform as Facebook. Yes, they did censor COVID information. Okay, so we know that took place. That's being said in the public. So imagine what's been behind closed doors. And imagine what hasn't been broken or imagine what hasn't come out. How bad or how bad could it be that it's happening in private is, is what that quote's implying. And does that really represent the fair democratic quote unquote free democratic country that we be- are believed to have been or be in you know in that respect and i think i think it's really important to understand that this is a thing that we all have to consider and we all have to do our work to keep it's not just something that you just miraculously have because if in my opinion at least if you give a person of power big tech politics politician etc a sit uh, a system that they can abu- abuse they will or if a politician can push a big tech company to suppress one side of an argument then obviously their side that the one that isn't being suppressed in theory is going to be seen more and then maybe more accepted in public discourse the white house when requested for comment uh, on this letter uh, that did uh, go out this week uh, said the following the white house defends its actions and saying it encourages the responsible actions to protect public health and safety which of course i think everyone would agree with they also added our position has been clear and consistent we believe that big tech companies and other private actors should take account of their action of their efforts excuse me their efforts of their actions and have on the american people where an independent choice about the information that they represent within the same letter mark zuckerberg also talked about the fact that there were some mistakes he felt he made related to the hunter biden controversy uh, that i'll leave some resources if you want to read more about uh, down in the description i won't be covering uh, the pacific uh, controversy in it in its entirety And a quote from the letter, Mr. Zuckerberg said that the story was temporarily uh, demoted on his platforms whilst undergoing a fact check after being warned by the FBI of a potential Russian disinformation operation. And in retrospect, he shouldn't have demoted the story. And within the same letter again, we have changed our policies and procedures to make sure this kind of sen- basically what he's implying in talking about the censorship is making sure that this won't happen again. So he clearly has a level of remorse about how he did suppress it and what his take or what his opinion or what his thoughts are on it now is in a re- reality where he is made aware of, say, a potential russian disinformation operation which has happened has been proven to happen he will obviously send it to fact checkers he will get it looked into but what he won't do is act until he has the relevant information which in my opinion is a more sensible thing to do because what if the fbi got it wrong people get it wrong what if and i'm not pointing at the fbi in america here obviously but what if the person who said it was x y or z has got it wrong And for those who do want to uh, read more about this, uh, consume more content related to this, I'll leave all my sources down below.